Hey, welcome back to the Sports Barn. Thursday, the 14th of September. Eric Arnold bringing you free college of pro football picks for this weekend. Uh, big slate, a lot of ground to cover. Uh, before we get to that, we're real excited here about a new channel that I've started that where I'm going to be releasing one video a week and it's going to tell the story of the 1958 college football season. Now you're saying, well that sounds boring. Uh, yeah, I mean I'm trying to keep the video short, subscriber X, because I know your attention span is very short. Um, the first video is 12 minutes. Uh, I went to make it shorter, but then, you know, there's some, probably some explanation that went into the video as to why is this here? I just think there's a lot of old history, good, interesting stories buried in old newspapers that no one knows anything about. And I think some of it's interesting, and I'm hoping you do too. Um, you know, for example, people walk around Ohio Stadium dressed in short sleeve shirts, a string tie, a block O black hat, and then horn rimmed glasses, and they don't even know why. It's like, do you know who you're emulating? Do you know the man that did that originally? Woody Hayes, do you know anything about the guy? No, probably not. So that's what I'm going to try to bring out. You know, uh, especially now, it's college football season, right? So what better time to do this sort of thing? I'm going to release a video a week. The channel I created is called Old Sports Stories. Old Sports Stories. So frankly, I'm probably going to, every time I release a video, I'm probably going to link it to this channel uh, for the foreseeable future. But it wouldn't hurt if you just went over there and subscribed. Old Sports Stories. Uh, the first video is up now. It's there. <laughs> I hope it's going to stay there. You know, uh, uh, YouTube's always a little funky about their copyright issues, despite the fact that everything I always use in my videos is almost 100% copied from YouTube or other YouTube videos. So I've never understood that. It's like, well, wait a minute, I got this material from your website, and you're saying it's copyrighted. Well, how did the other guy get to use it? Did he have permission from... You know, some guy that's been dead for 50 years? I doubt it. Uh, but at any rate. Uh, so, the first video, it's week one, 1958 college football highlights. Um, here, I'll tell you the exact title. Uh, maybe I won't tell you the exact title. I seem to have lost that. But it, words to that effect. Week one, 1958 college football highlights. Something to that effect. Hopefully, if you search on there, that'll bring it up because that's kind of specific. Okay, so that is part of our old business. Um, the second channel I have is the Sports Barn. That's all one word, the B's capitalized. Uh, to date, it has zero subscribers. So... Ultimately, what I'd like is to be able to post these sports-related videos there and not have to cross-post them everywhere. Um, that's where I'm striving for uh, at the moment since it has no subscribers. And the video that's up there has no views. I guess we'll just keep posting it here for now, you know, in the channel everybody knows. Uh, for now... You know, but we'll see uh, if that goes on forever. You know, perhaps at some point I'll just say, well, this is not worth my time. I'm just going to do something else. But for now, we'll keep posting them here. But I'd prefer if you went over there to the sports barn and subscribe so I could just post the stuff there. And then we could just stick to the politics in the main channel, which seems to be what anyone's interested in anyway. All right, sports, let's go. Um, college football last week, disaster. Shitty, shitty picks. You can't win them all. The pro picks were good. We were 9-6 and six in the pros. Uh, the college is just uh, 
pretty much, and we were, what, I guess five, six games below 500, I think. Ugh. So, at any rate, I think this week will be better. I seem to feel, I feel like we had a better look. It's a bad slate of games this week. I mean, there's just no good games. Uh, uh, Tennessee at Florida, is that your main game? Um, what else is up there? Uh, just a lot of huge favorites. The backyard brawl, if you're, you know, in the uh, Appalachia area, that might mean something to you. Uh, a handful of half decent interconference games like Minnesota, North Carolina. Anyway, uh, I think this game's tonight. Navy at Memphis. I've, I've always liked, uh, you get double digits and you're a, a, an option team. I always like that. I just feel those games are always a little closer than what they seem like they're going to be. The option team can generally control the clock, limit the score. So we'll take the 13 and a half with Navy. Uh, tomorrow, you got Maryland uh, laying the 14 and a half against Virginia. Um, we're going to take it. Uh, there's some of these teams that we're just going to bet against all year long. And if they stick it to us, they stick it to us. But I think Virginia is one of those teams we're going to bet against all year long. Um, we probably got beat last week just because they had a big emotional. It's their first home game since they canceled the season last year. Anybody in disarray like that, canceling games, that's bad. That means your program sucks. And I don't care if you did have a triple murder. I mean, they could murder 50 people in Ohio State and it wouldn't matter. They're not canceling a football game. No way. Uh, that's an indication of the strength of your program. So you're canceling games, you get a weak program. So that means to me, fade them. And we will. So... Lay the 14 and a half with Maryland. Uh, Army plus the eight and a half against San Antonio. Uh, Army used to be good. Now they had a real bad loss there uh, to Monroe. Uh, and, and I'm not sure what that means. We're going to just say, okay, that was an aberration. And we're coming back with Army here. Plus the eight and a half. Uh, LSU, Mississippi State. I'd forgotten about this. I actually looked this up. It's like, who's Mississippi State's coach? And it's some guy. And, and then you're saying, some guy? I thought they had a good coach. They did. His name was Mike Leach. He died. I forgot all about this poor guy died. Um, not vaccination related, I'm sure. But he died. And these are the type of situations where yeah, you know, you got a real good coach like that who's unexpectedly leaves. I think that leaves a big hole in the program. And right now, I think they got a guy in there that's just over his head. I'll take Brian Kelly, um, who's an established winning coach. We'll lay the nine and a half. I looked this up uh, as far as, as my database goes back to uh, the one I was looking at, 1989. Uh, LSU, 28 and 6 against Mississippi State. I'll take the team that has the 28, LSU. Uh, Penn State, minus the 14 and a half. Illinois uh, gives Penn State trouble out there sometimes. I had it in my head that they always give them trouble out there, and then it turns out that's not the case. It's just one specific instance that I remember. That was that great 94 team. Uh, that I followed so closely. I loved that team that Penn State had, and they almost stepped on their dicks there, uh, losing at Illinois in a game a year they went undefeated. Uh, Franklin just puts up points. He just covers numbers. Uh, as you saw there against West Virginia early in the year, he, won he ran a play with six seconds left on the uh, uh, West Virginia doorstep just so he could cover the number. Oh, I'm sure he has another explanation. Well, we wanted to get the second string work, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, and by the way, we were able to cover the number. You know, uh, 
that matters to these guys. Don't, and, and if they, I tell you, no one will ever admit it. No head coach is ever going to admit he pays any attention at all to the spread. But you cannot tell me that the way college football works with uh, it being about money and point spreads are about money. So you got wealthy alumni that are putting their bucks down on the home team because they're all about the home team and you don't cover numbers, that is going to get back to you from the boosters. Hey, you couldn't have gotten one more touchdown against uh, 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 Tomato Can State? You couldn't have gotten one more touchdown to cover our bets? Damn, man. I mean, you know, we're just joshing with you. No, we're not. No, we're not. You know, that's what that means. So Franklin gets that, and he covers numbers. So we'll take Penn State. Uh, New Mexico versus New Mexico State. Uh, throw out the record books when you look at this one. Who knows? Uh, the model like New Mexico pretty strong, so lay the point and a half there. I don't know about this one. This feels, I don't know. Florida State might actually be good, but they're going to have to prove it to me. That's a lot of points. BC conference team. We'll, we'll, I don't feel real strong about that, but I got BC written there. Um, Kansas State, strong home team. We'll fade them on the road. Uh, Missouri at home, catching three and a half. We'll take Missouri. If there's anything to the look ahead theory, this is a game for it. Um, Notre Dame hosts Ohio State next week. Major game, major game. How can they be excited about playing Central Michigan? For that matter, how long do you leave your starters in? I mean, you surely don't want to catch an injury before you're playing Ohio State. So I could see Notre Dame maybe uh, at halftime, you know, once they've got their guys, their, their work, uh, putting in the backup. So we'll try to, I would wait to play this game. I think you might catch 35 if you wait a little closer to game time. All right, Duke, Northwestern. Northwestern, another team we're just re reflexively fading. Uh, the coach fired. And it wasn't like he's a bad coach. He was the longest tenured coach in the Big Ten. And he, you know, in today's world, I think you just hang around long enough in major college sports. Sooner or later, they're going to come get you. So Fitzgerald wrapped up in a hazing scandal because, you know, some disgruntled kid who's no longer with the program and probably would have washed out for some other reason, you know, made a bitch and, uh, you know, now the guy's gone. So big hole left there at Northwestern. Uh, we'll take Duke. My uh, Duke's good. You know, they didn't just get lucky there and beat Clemson. They're, they're as good as Clemson, if not a little better. So we'll take the 18 and a half with Duke. Uh, Oregon State, um, they have a good quarter, but who are they? Oh, they get the Clemson kid. That's right. Uglugulie or whatever his name is. So we'll lay that against San Diego State. Uh, Oklahoma, generally these big powerhouse teams usually like to hand it to in-state rivals, rivals, I use that term loosely, uh, they never want little brother to start sneaking up on them, so they like to keep them down. Uh, we'll say Oklahoma, uh, generally when they're facing tomato cans, they can really run the score up into the 60s, so we'll go ahead there with Oklahoma. All right, we, we were right about this last week, barely, that Georgia, could, uh, uh, Georgia almost covered that point spread against Ball State by accident. Just by being on the field, the scorekeeper almost automatically put up an extra uh, 45 points there. <laughs> and, and then they somehow Ball State managed to get a late field goal for the backdoor cover. Um, this will be different. <laughs> I think Kirby Smart is going to, now it's for real, now it's time to put a marker down and say, we're still the best team in football, damn it. We're the two-time defending champion, and people still don't talk about us. So 
we're going to put a hammering on old South Carolina there. I would lay the 27 and a half. That's what we're going. Uh, I like this game. Iowa, the secret there to Iowa is they play like shit in September. I don't know why. Uh, maybe the kids are tired from having farmed all summer. That's a guess. I have no idea. But I think Western Michigan keeps that score a little closer uh, than four touchdowns. So we'll take Western Michigan. Interesting game here. Uh, um, Minnesota has an excellent coach. And he's on the cusp of breaking big. He just can't quite get that one big recruiting class that puts him over the top into that elite status. Um, P.J. Fleck. Carolina, they've been uh, cruising pretty well here. Uh, tough game last week at Appy State, going overtime. Now another tough game with Minnesota. I think North Carolina might be just a little tired here. You know, they played two major games now. And Minnesota, I think, is uh, well-rested and catching a little more than a touchdown on the road. We like Minnesota. Ohio State, the way I see Ohio State, their quarterback can't play and their coach can't coach. I cannot see where Ohio State's going to provide value anywhere this season, uh, perhaps unless they end up being over a touchdown underdog when they have to play Michigan. Uh, that might be the only place on the whole schedule where I see this team might give you value. Uh, now, they're going to have to prove it to me. They go out and beat Western Kentucky 80-2, to which is possible. Uh, but I think they're going to lose next week to Notre Dame. Uh, this Ohio State team is highly unimpressive to me. Uh, I've, now, granted, I've seen all about five minutes of them play all year long. You know, I'm just kind of making a real, you know, snap unfair judgment. But that's what we do. You know, we make unfair snap judgments all day long. You just got to be right. You know, you generally, you're probably right 53% of the time when you make a snap judgment about somebody. You know, in other words, you can't judge a book by its cover. Well, sometimes you can. <laughs> sometimes you can. You know, uh, your daughter comes home with uh, her new boyfriend and he hasn't shaved in eight days and He's got a shirt on that says, I like to smoke weed. He's probably a scumbag. He's probably a scumbag. Uh, uh, you know, he probably doesn't have a job, and he's probably a scumbag. Uh, uh, that's your snap judgment. Oh, he could be, you know, uh, he could be a, 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 the salt of the earth. He could be a great guy. He could be. He's probably not, though. So, yeah, we make snap judgments all the time. The trick is to be, you know, more right about them than wrong. Oh, let's see. Michigan State, another automatic fade team. Now, did I get this right? Did I, 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 I didn't dig into this story. I think I read an article, half of it, quickly. The coach there was Mel Tucker, and he's been, if, uh, has he been sued? I think he's been sued, or, or there's some investigation going on. One of these Me Too, Title IX, whatever the hell sexual harassment deals, and the woman suing him is like a professional Title IX lawsuit woman, you know, a, a professional victim. Did I get this right? That's what I read, and I was like, did I? This doesn't make sense. It's like, does this guy try to put the moves on a Title IX Me Too lawyer? What, <laughs> what are you doing? I, 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 that's just stupid. That's just dumb. I mean, you, you, those type of people you just stay away from. You just stay as far away from them as you can. They're, they're toxic. They're poison. They're dangerous. You can't do anything there but lose. So whether or not this guy committed whatever crimes he was alleged to have committed, doesn't matter. The guy's, you, you can't bet on him because he's stupid. It, it, geez, you know, that's the kind where you might, 
you have a friend, let's say two guy friends, and perhaps you see your friend uh, and maybe he looks, I don't know, better than he normally looks. Maybe he's lost weight. Maybe he's uh, got some nice clothes on, um, whatever. It would not be unusual or even gay for you and your friend to say to your uh, friend, oh, you look good today, you know, or hey, you're looking good. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean I want to have sex with the guy. Uh, that doesn't mean uh, uh, anything other than you're just paying him a banal compliment. Just a run of the mill, hey, I want to make you feel good because you're my friend and point out the obvious that you look better than you normally do. Hey, you know, you, a Title IX uh, lawyer, you can't say that to her. Absolutely not. No. Uh, it, we're almost getting to the point where any woman you can't say that to. You got to be careful. You know, but this guy, you know, I'm sure Mel Tucker, you know, thinking I'm so fly, I can get away with anything because I'm fly. Yeah, okay. So, anyway, that's a long way of saying, hey, bet Washington. Uh, Florida, we're going to take them at home catching six and a half against Tennessee. What? Tennessee's good all of a sudden? Did I miss something? I don't know. We, we, I like the swamp there, and uh, I think that's a night game, too. So, better yet, night game, they're going to be drinking all day. That place is going to be pretty revved up. We like Billy Napier as a coach, and I think maybe this is Florida's coming out party. They didn't look good against Utah. Maybe this is their coming out party. Uh, backyard brawl. Uh, hooray to whoever put this matchup back together. Uh, they put it together last year for the first time, and God knows when, and it was a classic. Uh, great game. Uh, we're going to say West Virginia gets their uh, vengeance uh, and lay the two and a half. Syracuse, they always play one pretty good team out of conference and they usually win that game and then often it's just enough to put them in a bowl game and they've been doing that for years and this is that one game and we're going to say they get it as they normally do uh minus two and a half uh old miss uh sec out of conference we'll take the sec uh michigan's look like just i don't know going through the motions here these big numbers uh without harbaugh uh, 40 and a half, they just haven't seemingly been able to run over anybody yet. I don't know, maybe they're missing that Harbaugh fire you up speech. We'll take Bowling Green. Oregon, we have no idea why. We'll lay the huge number there. Uh, Texas, you know, I, I wrote Wyoming down initially, and then I thought to myself, what if that had said Alabama minus 30 uh, versus Wyoming? You wouldn't hesitate then. You would write down Alabama. Minus 30? I mean, that should be a lot more than that. Well, Texas is Alabama. They are the new Alabama. They're better than Alabama. So, yeah, I don't think we should be uh, scared to lay the 30 here. Um, coming off that big win, I think that just means they're goddamn good. They are really goddamn good. And let's not be afraid to lay some big points because they're that good. Uh, Colorado, I think we're just going to bet on them until proven otherwise. Another really good team. I mean, I, I'm, I've got Colorado in my top ten, you know, in my mind. You know, that's one of the best teams in the country. Uh, Clemson, we like them pretty well coming off that big embarrassing loss. Um, Florida Atlantic, that strikes me. If Clemson's interested, they can name the score. I think they're going to be highly interested. Uh, we'll go ahead and see if Dabo can't. Uh, he's, you know, the guy used to be elite. He used to be an elite program. Now it's starting to filter out of there. Uh, let's see if he can write the ship. We'll lay the 24 and a half. And then two others that the model liked. Uh, TSC, uh, TCU, I think they are underrated. Let's put it that way. Uh, they almost beat Colorado. Colorado's the top 10 team. To me, that means TCU's the top 15 team. Uh, Houston's nothing special. We particularly do not like the Houston coach. So we'll lay the seven and a half there. Rutgers is not bad. That's not bad there. That's a V, not a U. 
that's a V, Virginia Tech. We were real disappointed that Virginia Tech couldn't handle Purdue. So maybe Virginia Tech's not very good. Rutgers is pretty good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say Rutgers pounds those guys. So that's that. That's college football. All right, pros. I don't have a good feel for this game tonight. This is one that I don't have a good feel for. Um, the Eagles should beat the Vikings, and they should beat them easily. It's just right now the Eagles are kind of, they got lucky against the Patriots. Uh, we, we, I, I'm, I'm probably one reason I put the Eagles down there is due to injuries, there's a guy on that Eagle team that I think is a superstar. And you're going to see him tonight. I don't know how you can't see him tonight. They played him like five snaps against the Patriots. I have no idea why he, didn't, he wasn't starting. I think they have to start him tonight just because of the injuries. His name's Nolan Smith from Georgia. And this guy's an edge rusher. I think he's like the next Von Miller. This guy is just, I, I can't remember last time we had a guy like this uh, on the Eagles. And I could be totally wrong. Again, this is another one of them snap judgments that, oh, you're wearing a I Smoke Weed shirt. Uh, first time you come meet me, your girlfriend's father, I smoke weed. I think you're a bum. Uh, you know, another snap judgment. But we'll see. I, uh, I think that uh, you're going to see him make a big play tonight. And that may make all the difference. Uh, the Colts plus the one and a half against the, uh, who, what tomato can are they playing? Two bad teams, I forget. Who's the other bad team? Ah, uh, jeez, I've got it written here. The Texans, that's right. I don't think C.J. Stroud can play. And, and I think this is kind of, I didn't think Anthony Richardson could play, but uh, they almost won last week. And uh, he played better than I thought he would. And I think Stroud played worse than I thought he would. So I'm going to go ahead and take Richardson and the Colts there. Uh, Las Vegas. Uh, I think that's a lot of points for them to be laying or, or the Bills to be laying against the Raiders. I don't know the Raiders are that bad. And I don't know the Bills are that good. Uh, they look like the Bills look terrible on Monday night. Josh Allen is going to have to start valuing the ball a little bit, or they're going to lose a lot of games they should win. So we'll take the eight and a half. Uh, we'll take the Bengals to bounce back against the Ravens. Uh, real poor effort by the Bengals in week one. Uh, this is a big game here for the uh, Bengals. You don't want to go down 0-2. Although last year, I guess they did, and they uh, turned out just fine. Uh, but we'll, we'll take the bounce with the Bengals. Uh, not wild about this game, but there are a lot of factors blowing in the Seahawks' direction that the Lions are so over themselves right now. If there was ever a time for them to step on their dicks, this is it. I mean, after beating the Chiefs in the opener... And that's, frankly, they just got lucky. That was just shit luck that they won that game. And ball bouncing off a wide open receiver running for a first down up in the air, and they run it back for a touchdown. You know, it's probably a 10 point swing, which would have made all the, you know, the difference between a one point win and an eight point loss. Uh, you know, we'd be looking at the lines a little differently then. Uh, but now with them winning, it's like, oh my God, the Lions, they're unbelievable. And the Seahawks bouncing off a bad loss. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the points there and see if the Lions can do it again. We're going to show me. We, we need to be shown here. Uh, Jacksonville hosting the Chiefs. Three and a half. Getting three and a half at home. Um, we're going to... The Jags seem to be a team that plays down to the competition or plays up to the competition, uh, that they just seem to play close games. They very rarely blow people out and they very rarely get blown out. That Again, snap judgment, I have no idea if that's true. Uh, but we like them. We'll take the three and a half. Uh, the Buccaneers, 
I only have to lay two and a half against the Bears? I mean, the Bears, uh, they got to prove it to me. That just strikes me as a bad team. And until that team proves that they're not a bad team, what, any point spread, say a field goal or less, I, I think you just automatically have to take the opponent. So we'll take the Bucks. Uh, the Chargers, the way you generally play them is uh, fade them at home and uh, take them on the road. They're only, only laying three at a bad Titan team. I mean, that Titan team, explain to me how that's just not a bad team. They've lost, what, eight, nine games in a row? Didn't they lose like seven games last year to end the season? And But they got their quarterback now. Yeah, yeah, he's back. I, uh, they couldn't win in New Orleans, and that was, you know, I mean, the Saints are nothing special. So I think the Chargers are better than the uh, Titans, and we'll lay the three there. I like the Packers. I mean, I think Jordan Love is an NFL quarterback. Uh, so I think he's probably better uh, than what they've got there at Atlanta. So we'll take the points. I think the Giants are going to kill the Cardinals. I mean, that was embarrassing. The Giants embarrassed themselves. Uh, what was it? Sunday night? Sunday night. They embarrassed themselves. Uh, look out for embarrassed teams. And the Cardinals are just embarrassing, period. There's a difference. So uh, I think the Giants are the ones that come out with their hair on fire and take care of business there. That's a decent franchise. The Giants are not a bad franchise. The Cardinals are a bad franchise. I went back and forth on this one, and ultimately, I think we're just going to ride the Niners uh, until something proves otherwise. They were so impressive against the Steelers, and this is a team that might just be good. You know, I, I think there's two teams... They look spectacular in week one. The Niners and the Cowboys, I think the Niners are actually that good. The Cowboys, I think they just, they just match up well against the Giants, and I think they're not nearly as good as they showed Sunday night. I think the Niners are that good, and we'll lay the seven and a half against the Rams. Uh, the Jets, again, uh, we don't think the Cowboys are that good. Um, the Jets... Everybody's now giving them up for dead, of course, because they've gotten a Zach Wilson, now their quarterback, and everybody is like, well, that was a great moment for you there, the Jets winning that game after the tragedy of losing your quarterback for the season. Uh, and, and that was nice. I hope that moment tied you over for the whole season because <laughs> it's going to have to. Uh, that defense is good. That Jet defense is good. So I can see this being a closer game than people think. And the Cowboys have a real habit, a bad habit if you're a Cowboy fan, of playing these out-of-conference teams at home close. That they do not generally take care of business when these out-of-conference teams come in there uh, uh, as underdogs. So we'll take the Jets. Uh, Washington, sure, you're going to give me three and a half at a bad Denver team. Yeah, yeah, we'll take it. Uh, the Dolphins minus three. Ah, I went back and forth with this. And you know what? I kind of think at this point in the various careers, the guy down in Miami, what's his name, McDaniel, he might be a better coach right now than Belichick is. You know, at a certain point, it's just over. You know, you're not as good as you used to be anymore. And Belichick's got to be pushing 70. I kind of think that this Dolphin team, you know, you got uh, Tua versus Mac Jones. To me, there's no no comparison there. I think Tua is just better. Uh, so you got better coach, better quarterback. I think it's Miami. Uh, the Saints. You know where I read this? I, I I didn't know what to do with this game, and then I thought, you know what the answer is? The answer is there's a bunch of quarterbacks there in that division, and. One of them is clearly better than the others. Uh, what is it? Derek Carr, Baker Mayfield. Uh, I don't even know who is Atlanta. Is it Ritter? And uh, Bryce Young. Um, Carr is just the better and by far of any of those to me. And I think that's how you read that. 
He's the best quarterback in that division, i.e. then the Saints are going to be the best team. If, I, you know, the coach, I don't like the coach, so uh, it's not going to be far and away. They're not going to win 12 games. But I think you have two divisional teams matched up here. We'll go ahead and lay the points and take the Saints. Uh, and then we love this game. Come on. <laughs> the Steelers on Monday night? Catching points? The Steelers are a great Monday night team. They always have been. And now here comes the team that they generally beat like a rep red-headed stepchild. The Cleveland Browns. Oh, man. I just think the Steelers are going to kill those guys. That, I, did, I just... Yeah, I, I'm not seeing... I'm not on the Browns bandwagon. I think it's a bad franchise. Um, they caught all the stars were in alignment last Sunday when they played the Bengals. I think my brother has that team pegged pretty well, that they're going to be wildly inconsistent. You're going to see big wins against good teams like the last Sunday, and then you're going to see them just get beat by teams that shouldn't beat them. Maybe this is one of them, where the Steelers, they're okay. They're nothing special. Uh, I think they're going to pound the Browns. Uh, so that's what we have there for you. Now remember, uh, in the comments, we're going to post the link to this 1958 highlight film I put together. I don't think it's terrible, honestly. I don't think it's... You know, I spent a lot of time working on this, damn it. And uh, I think it's not so bad. So, hey, give it a look. You know, uh, if it's not your cup of tea, uh, well, hopefully some other football fan will wander in, you know, via the uh, search engine. And uh, maybe we'll get some views on it that way. Uh, but uh, give it a look if you got half a minute. All right, so there are a bunch of free picks for you. Like I said, last week sucked in college. The NFL, we did well. Uh, I, I feel okay about these picks. I do. And, and I think that matters. It, it's been my experience that when you feel like you you got a pretty good look at a card, you have a good look at the card, and you're going to do well. Uh, and when you can't make heads or tails out of stuff, you're probably going to lose. So we'll see how that comes out. All right. Um, Sports Barn, go over there and subscribe. I'm going to cross post this video uh, between the two places, so it'll be both places, but it would be helpful if I could just post these videos in the Sports Barn channel and not have to post both places. Thank you, and we'll talk again. <laughs>